So this is our simple amplifier solution. I say simple, somewhat loosely. So it's got kind of a deep resonance. Test one, two, test one, two, test one, two. Check out the description for the tools, the parts list, and instructions. First, you get yourself a Movo microphone, and it comes with a nice little built-in preamp. It's designed for cameras or whatever, smartphones, I guess. When you're in camera mode, it uh, activates a preamp. Here's the different parts. We have the board, we have the five volt to three, or 3 or 3.7 volt to five volt converter. We've got our speaker. Okay. So you have the micro preamp, and we've got our TRS connector. So what I did was, let me pull these off. I soldered the TRS connector as such. It has three pins on it. I put the middle pin on the ground up here, and then I've got the this pin going into R, and this one going into L. And the board did not come with these on it, so again, I used this strip to break off a few, put them in the board, solder them in, and I like to mark mine with red, wherever red is due, so I don't mess up the pinning. If you mess up the pinning on this, you will burn it out. This, this board is not forgiving at all. So, I've got the power input here to this board, and this board takes 5 volts, and that's why I have this converter. So I've got the wires plugged in here, and I kind of wrapped it around the board, because I'm just trying to use the wires right out of the box, as little soldering as possible. Of course, the logical thing would be to solder it to it, because I did solder it to this board, solder it to it, do just as long as you need, solder it to this, a permanent fixture. So that's our that's for our power going in. These boards come in a multi-pack, that's how I bought them. And they come default as converting 3.7 volts to 12 volts. But it has a little gauge on the back or a little map on the back on how you can map it out. Essentially what you need to do is pull off the two resistors for five volts. And these are your two resistors, your A and B. So you just basically put your soldering iron on there pretty quick, pull it, push it off, push it off. And then what I like to do is on the board, I'll take a green highlighter or a green marker and go over five volts. So I know that this board is marked for five volts or planned for five volts. So what I did additionally to this was I used this straight set of pins, these straight set of header pins, and I essentially just soldered them on like this, but you could do it either way. You could also do it just like this, which is probably a better way to do it, but I was just trying to ease up on the bottom because it's this could mount flat if I put those on with straight pins instead so your choice or you don't even have to do that at all if you don't like this is your power in it's nicely labeled with an arrow in so I've got my 3.7 volts coming in and then I've got a 5 volt coming out and I've got a positive and a negative so I wired those accordingly on this one which you can kind of see through my uh, amalgamation of hot glue I took that and then I just I used one of these JST XH 2.5 millimeters, 2.54 millimeter. And this is a 2.54 millimeter, and I know that because it has the two prongs on the back, if you can see those. There you go. It's got those two prongs on the back, while the two millimeter has a single line on the back. Either one should work. If you're tight on space, you can go with two millimeter. It might result in the pins needing to do this a little bit, but either way. So I soldered that line on here. I wrapped it around and I plugged it into the headers that I had soldered on previously. I then put hot glue on it to hold it in place so I can use this as a single unit and mount it on a surface. That would then necessitate my power coming in. So I've got my 3.7 volt power. And I come in here. So now we plug in our speaker. Now I follow, of course, my red markings and I align those. So I've got two channels out. I plug in this. This is actually a TRRS cable, but it still works fine with this TRS connector. So now we got everything hooked up appropriately. Green is on for the preamp, so I want that in the on position. And by default, you probably have this turned off. This board has a power off and an analog on switch and volume all in one. So listen. 
I heard a nice little click. So now it's on. I'm going to volume up. So the speaker that we do have connected is a Dayton Audio speaker, DAE X19 QLP-4. It's a 4 ohm 5 watt speaker. It's an exciter. So what you do is you mount it to your surface. A benefit of um, these kind of speakers, I can feel it. I can feel my voice going through it. A benefit of these kind of speakers is um, it adheres to the surface, turns whatever your surface here you've got into the speaker. And a benefit of this particular one is it has additional connection points. If you've ever used any of these before, I've used one similar to this, and it's pretty heavy. Um, and I have it inside a mask, and it has started to peel out. Um, then there's also these versions, which don't have this, but it has a large, flat surface you can mount to. And actually screw out and theoretically swap out if you wanted to. Uh, these are more solid methods of adhering to surfaces rather than ones without these additional on the outside. Regardless, let's just do a quick test. Test one, two. Test one, two. I'm on a large, like, hollow core door that I'm using as a table, so it's got kind of a deep resonance. Test one, two. Test one, two. Because this isn't directly adhered to the door, it is kind of jumping up and down a bit, so it is rattling a little bit, but that's only because it's not adhered to the surface. Now, just for comparison's sake, you can have all different kinds of speakers. So here are some of the other speakers I've got. And I'm just going to show you the comparison of that's So that's one of my smaller speakers. This is a coin speaker. And these are really only if you need the most compact space possible. You're not going to let it get a lot of punch out of these. But the vented ones I find sound better. And vented are the ones that with the holes in the back. And then of course larger is always better for output. But not always necessarily feasible. Depending on your use case, you may be able to put this in under armor or inside something or whatever. Now this one's a big one. It's still only um, 25 millimeters. It does have a lot larger footprint and you can hear quite a difference. So let's hear this first one again. Test one, two. I'm just gonna add this to it. So as you see in the zoom in, it's right there that's plugged into the left channel. And then there's two other pins for the right channel. And I go ahead and I pull out the left channel just so we can hear the right channel by itself. So we can have a good comparison. But if you want to, you could have two speakers doing your output. Test one, two. So this has a much, much better resonance. Anyway, you switch it up as you need. And so that's kind of, this is kind of the basic setup. There's no switches other than this board. So this is our absolute minimalist setup. I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced setup. Now, if you prefer, you can, of course, add multiple speakers. But what I want to do is I want to add in a power switch on my battery. So I've made a power switch. And you can kind of see how it's made. I run the black wire completely through. It does not hit the switch at all, but my red wire is going into a side and out in the middle. So then when my switch is over, over those two, then it links those two and the signal passes. When it's over here, if there was another thing plugged in, it would then link that. So this has the option to do two different things, but I just use it as a single on off. So this has an input or a female part and a male part. And these I actually used a PH cable rather than XH. So it's a little smaller. It's the 2.0 millimeter rather than the 2.54. So why not my power? Positive. Yeah, it looks like this is maybe a little big for this one, but uh, there are other ones that would fit in here, but it still can pass the signal. So I'm gonna turn it on and now we've got power. So this is a, a nice capability to have. Check out the description for the tools, the parts list and instructions. If it helped you out, give a thumbs up. Leave me your comments. Feel free to subscribe. Take care. I'm out.